you probably don't want to park your most expensive car right here. When the mouse trips the, trips the trap, it would bounce off and down and into the innards of the house where you couldn't reach it. And then you've got dead mouse smell for quite a while. This is personal experience you have to take advantage of here. Every house has its own unique challenges, downsides, and difficult issues. This video is going to be a little different than what I usually do. I wanted to focus on those things, specifically whoever ends up buying this place. I just want them to have the head start of my experience to work with. Also, because not all challenges are really all that unique, there's a lot in here that may be of interest to other people. If you saw my last video, you'll know that the challenge that's foremost on my mind right now is the fact that we don't have any running water right now. The main water service from the road to our house broke somewhere. So I need to get that fixed before we can sell the house. I'm sure you can imagine this not very well timed snow and ice has delayed replacing that pipe. Wendy and I have never been apart this long. I really would like to get back to Missouri with her, and especially her cooking. But that's just gonna have to wait until we can get this problem fixed. The driveway right here has a slight slope down towards the house. So the most important regular maintenance item for the new homeowner to know about is making sure that this drain is free of leaves and debris. The garage will flood if there's too much debris around it. When my uncle built this place, he probably should have had the house positioned just about 50 feet that way, so it would have been right at the top of the slope. When I first bought this house, it had a flat drain cover, not this popped up one, so it would quickly be covered. And unless you knew exactly where it was, you couldn't even find the drain to clear it under a gigantic puddle of water out here. It almost doesn't matter how careful you are, water will come into the garage sometimes. When it does, it accumulates right by the garage door, but especially right here in this corner. When I built my picture framing workbenches, I lifted this one up on two by twos, so my entire inventory of cut down mat boards would not be ruined in one single heavy rain event. When we bought this house, this drain had been notorious for flooding the carport during heavy rains. It really hasn't been much of an issue for us since we had this tree cut down. I'm pretty sure its roots must have broken into that drain pipe, and when those roots were alive, they were actively clogging it. Of course, it's important to keep the gutters clean. These clean-out screens all around the house are very convenient but you do need to know from time to time, you will have to pull out this little S shaped section of the gutter and empty it. Here's another tip about living at this house. You probably don't want to park your most expensive car right here. Most of the pine cones we have around here are like this. They're not going to cause much problem. But this tree right here has super dense, heavy pine cones. And when they fall from way up there, they can leave a dent. Composting has been hard but rewarding work. You, of course, can do as much or as little composting as you like. I've been progressively adding capacity and replacing older compost bins over the years. These two bins are at the end of their life. I'd suggest Maybe just taking them out after they're empty and waiting a year or so just to see if you even need that much um, capacity for compost. The compost we're creating here at Ivy Acres is more than we need. 
And I don't think there's a lot of serious gardeners out there that can say that. Right now, this one and this one are full of leaves as a carbon source for next year's compost. When you run out of leaves, you can use this pile of chipped and shredded branches. Branches come down here all of the time, so that's, that's a good endless resource. Another primary carbon source that I like to use is the old bedding that I muck out of the chicken coop. Mostly the nitrogen is yard clippings, stuff from the garden, animal manure, stuff like that. Of course, this raised bed needs to be replaced. I'm embarrassed to leave it in this condition, but Wendy insisted that I not spend any money to fix it. It was just an unnecessary, unnecessary expense in her opinion. We picked a bad spot for the greenhouse. It's working well enough for Wendy's peppers, but it was severely damaged in an ice storm a few years ago. It bothers me that it's in this condition, but we really couldn't justify to ourselves repairing or replacing it when another ice storm might come along and do the same thing all over again. The stump nurse log trees are my favorite project here at Ivy Acres. I wanted to go down and show you the one by the creek, but all of this ice is making those stairs a little too dangerous to do that. The stump nurse log trees do require hand watering during the summertime dry spells. That one down there by the creek is super close to an everlasting water source. And generally speaking, tree roots will grow about two to three times down farther into the ground than the tree actually is tall. So that tree may already be self-sufficient. Here's that tree I was talking about. The old dead tree stump is contained in the box. The tree's roots are intended to grow down into that stump as a scaffolding. Eventually, when the tree roots are large enough, the box will be removed, the roots will be exposed, and what will be left will be an above ground, whimsical, living work of art. When can those boards be removed? I'm not exactly sure. I think the safest bet would be to wait for those boards to start to deteriorate and then remove them. I had always intended to put in a creekside walking path, but never got around to it. At certain times of the year, the uh, creek bank is just such a sloggy mess that it's easier just to put on rubber boots and walk up and down in the creek itself. The gold standard for a creekside path would probably be a series of raised platform decks similar to what they have at the Everglades National Park. You could also just put in a couple of French drains and backfill it with a whole bunch of river rock. Or maybe just put in a series of stepping stones similar to the stairs that lead down there. When I bought this place, everything was smothered in ivy. I uprooted it all except for this one patch. That slope is very steep and eradicating the ivy there, in my opinion, would have caused too much erosion. Plus, it was always my intention to age in place here and I knew I would not be able to get up and down there in the future to weed it. My uncle planted this bamboo as a privacy screen. Bamboo is invasive, but this stuff has done very well just staying in its clumps. If you did try to just chainsaw the stuff down, 
the rhizomes underground would go into shock and respond with explosive growth all over the place. Of course, the big trees right around this deck are pretty special. This has been a problem for a long time. The tree is just growing right into the deck. It was just going to be way too difficult and expensive for us to have the deck redone. There were other things out here that we wanted to do. If the deck was ever going to be redone, I would have them do the railings a little differently. Right now the slats go all the way down. I would have them end a little bit up off the deck with another 2x4. There's a whole lot of these kind of branches that come down out here. And it would be just a lot easier to sweep them right off the deck without those slats in the way. I almost forgot. Remember I said my uncle should have placed the house about 50 feet more that way? Here's another very good reason why that should have happened. By the time I bought the place, the house had had about 45 years to sink and settle in, and it did so a little more than it should have. The house was kind of collapsing down a little bit, right about here, more or less, under where the fireplace is. The prospect of having this place tumble into the ravine was unthinkable to me. So I spared no expense having the foundation stabilized by a company called Ramjack. If you have chickens, you probably need to clean the eggs. My preference is to do it inside the house here in the laundry room. I expected that this drain would quickly clog with stuff. So I had a garbage disposal installed. There's the switch. From time to time, the garbage disposal will overload and stop working. When that happens, the first thing you need to do is unplug the garbage disposal. Right down here. You can use this wrench, very weird looking wrench. reach right down through and manually turn the blades in. And that helps. You may also need to press this reset button. And I like to do that with the plug itself. Mice are a persistent problem here. Wendy likes to say that this house was designed with a super highway for mice right in the middle and she's not wrong. But that's a good thing and a bad thing. Well, mostly it is a bad thing, but there is a silver lining. Because the mice have such easy access to the core of the house, just inside that access panel for the jet tub is the perfect place to take care of the problem. One of the best things about this location is you can put that cover back on and your pets can't get at the bait. So, it's pet safe. At first we'd use standard mouse traps. Sometimes they'd work, usually they wouldn't, and even when they did you'd only get one mouse. And half the time when the mouse trips the, trips the trap it would bounce off and down and into the inners of the house where you couldn't reach it, and then you've got dead mouse smell for quite a while. This is personal experience you have to take advantage of here. Anyway, I've got something much better to take care of the mice. Since then, I've been using this tray so the mice easily climb in and then they get caught and they don't fall anywhere and you can just take care of the problem. But I've got something even better than those mouse traps now. A much better way to take care of the problem. It's called Ramic Green. This is not a sponsor, just something that's worked really well for me. 
it's a poison that uh, makes the mice die of thirst. So they, they eat those little green balls and because they get so thirsty, they immediately run down and outside the house where water is and they die outside. It's pretty nice not even having to take care of the dead mice. Inside this closet door downstairs is another really good place to put the poison. The mice like it in here and it's also good because you close up the closet and again, pet safe. It's been a few days and the ice is now melting. The utility companies have come out to mark where our water and gas lines are. all the way down in preparation for the plumbing work. All right, so the guys are out here. I'm gonna describe how, with a plan for what we're doing. We're gonna bring a new line from the, from the meter at the street over to right about here. Currently, we have a, a yard hydrant there and a yard hydrant out by the greenhouse we're going to just end up with one yard hydrant from right there we're going to branch over and put a yard hydrant right about here which is ideal because it's super close to the garden and super close to where the goats were we don't even need that second yard hydrant and from there, it'll go over to the house. This is Brandon with Obsidian Plumbing, and uh, he's helping us out. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. You bet. I had no idea the kind of equipment that was available and what is possible to do these days. I had envisioned having to trench a line, cut up and rip up the driveway, and then have to re-pour concrete after that what a mess right but they've got a drilling machine that can go down and right underneath everything without disturbing much of anything it's pretty cool Okay, so that's uh, the that's we'll, we'll pipe will actually it. stretch it out and pull it. Yep, this goes in, the pipe goes in here and then we'll pull back. So you, this device basically tracks where the meter is so you can set this anywhere and then you'll know where it goes. The head, the head of that uh, yeah. drill, we push it in the ground that tracks where the head is. It gives us the depth, the uh, pitch. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot to it. How deep do you need to go? Uh, about 24. 24 inches? Yeah. Okay. So okay. it'll be right here, and then they'll come up with a drill, probably set up yeah, here. Just shoot right over there. Yeah, yeah. shoot straight. Well, so. Okay. Yes, sir. So this manhole cover right here is a little confusing to the guys because it looks like a city sewer manhole cover, but we know we're not on the city sewer, we're on a septic tank. So they're gonna open this up and just see what's going on with it. I want them to be comfortable with whatever they're doing and know exactly what we've got going on out here.
at the top of the... Is that burnt? Nah, I really don't know what I'm looking at. It's like a whale or something. Well, I know we're on city water. I've been getting the bills all these years. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a lid to a septic tank, probably. It's deep, though. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's about 48 inches right there, 50 inches. inches. So if we go 24, the drain fill will go golden. I think we'll be above everything. Oh, yeah. Kind of like a metal detector. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> than the moon. Thank you for hanging out with me while I try to get back to the moon. <laughs>